bursting airborne and sideways, wheels stretching for the ground, the ROP, stunningly rapid, and now very aloft Chevrolet Camaro ZL1 should be a barbaric, deadly thing. Yet, in the crucial milliseconds following its oblique touchdown, it defines itself differently. Aaron Link, the ZL1's lead development engineer, adds a breath of counter-steer, stays in the gas, and carries the slide, fully committed, to the track's edge. Crimson leaves explode behind its rear diffuser, then waft to the ground in what remains of the ZL1's throat punch exhaust note. The most powerful Camaro ever made fires a round of upshifts into the automare and hurls itself at the next corner, unfazed. It's a hell of a way to start the day. That's the else, says Link, referring to the ZL1's electronically controlled limited slip differential, which it shares with the SS1 but trimmed for 2017. It's scenarios like that that really sold us on the else, despite its weight penalty. The ZL1's active diff weighs 44 pounds more than the clutch type limited slip differential in the Camaro SS, but it's lighter than the massive 9.9 inch diff in the fifth generation ZL1. And neither of those offered as much authority over these sorts of automotive gymnastics. GM calls this ability yaw damping and offers no shortage of data to prove it works, all of which are less convincing than 1 minute and 53 seconds on its Milford Road course. That's about the time the ZL1 is capable of posting around the famed development track. Chevy won't reveal the exact time but says it's about 3 seconds quicker than the last ZL1, which ran a 156. The ZL1, available as a coupe and a convertible, shares with the Corvette Z06 its Herculean power plant, the supercharged 6.2-liter LT4 V8. Internally, both mills are identical, right down to the titanium intake valves and forged rods and pistons. In this latest King of Camaros, however, a conventional oil pan replaces the Z06's dry sump lubrication. Surprisingly, a lack of packaging space demanded the change. But what matters is this, 650 horsepower at 6,400 revolutions per minute and 650 pound-feet at the work at 3,600 revolutions per minute. It's all managed, orally, by a dual-mode exhaust, which is now electronically controlled rather than vacuum-actuated as it was on the last ZL1. Chevy offers two transmissions here including a high-to-torque version of the six-speed Dream Act TR6060 that's available in the Camaro SS. A tailored gear set allows the manual transmission-equipped ZL1 to hit 60 miles per hour in first gear, while both fifth and sixth are overdrive gears. At 0.54 to 1, sixth gear is a true fuel economy cog, though the 3.73 final drive is still low enough to serve up shovel to the spleen hole shots. But the 10-speed automatic, co-developed with Ford, is the one that's so hotly anticipated and the one we experienced from the passenger seat. Even from that chair, it's clear that it will be the go-to gearbox if minimizing lap times is a priority. Chevy engineers compared the 10-speed shift times with those of the dual-clutch units in the 991 Porsche 911 Carrera S and the McLaren MP412C, which admittedly are not the newest iterations of those cars. The difference is, though small, fell convincingly in favor of the Chevy. Here the 10-speed uses a ZL1 specific to work converter, clutch components, bearings, software, and controllers. Its 0.6421 10th gear is numerically lower than what the transmission will offer in other applications. 10-speed equipped ZL1 coupes will have a 2.85 to 1 final drive ratio. Convertibles will be 2.77 to 1 and won't get the else. Most striking is the gearbox's ability to keep the LT4 engine almost indefinitely in the most potent portion of its rev range. When it's working hard, the 10-speed is all nervous energy, ripping through tightly spaced gears with unrelenting pace. The result and thrust and sound are gleefully rewarding. Enough so that Link says the automatic is the component of the car that makes him most proud. It just never falls off, he says. Even at the higher speeds we see on the ring, the Nürburgring Nord's life, where GM partially developed the ZL1, there's always a building sensation to this car's acceleration.
four drive modes influencing all the car's banners remain, snow, ice, tour, sport, and track. It's likely, though, that the 10-speed has crossed the don't bother threshold when it comes to do-it-yourself paddle shifting. Even Link admits that it's hard to know whether to go down three gears or four in certain scenarios. But, let's face it, the days of shifting automatics yourself stopped being rewarding back when they reached seven gears. Using drive, as Link did on a ride along, frees up brain power for steering and braking. If you want to shift yourself, get the six speed. Back at Milford, a few corners later, Link shortens a bend and squares up the curb's leading edge with the ZL1's right front tire. It's a move that should deliver a full wind-up nut shot to the spring and damper, further ventilating the already thoroughly ventilated hood. But the ZL1 shrugs off the blow and sticks unflinchingly through the remaining S's, launching us to 160 miles per hour on the front straight, which isn't really straight at all. Magnet or heological dampers, standard on the ZL1, play no small role in the car's preternatural control and are perhaps the greatest ally to the car's performance traction management system, which applies the exact work the rear wheels are able to put down in virtually any scenario. How effective is the ZL1's PTM system? So much so that Drew Cattell, the ride and handling engineer who drove the ZL1 for its Nürburgring hot lap, relied on its reassurance through the Green Hell's 12.9 miles. Link, during our laps, drove fully unrestricted. Chevy hadn't released the ZL1's official ring lap time as of our deadline. But that did say that the new car is more than 11 seconds quicker than the previous ZL1 7.41.27, which makes it a 7.30 or better. We've seen data logs confirming that it's 10 miles per hour faster than the old ZL1, call it about 182 miles per hour, going into Tiergarten, the fastest section of the track. A mid to low 7.20 seems possible. Broad-shouldered, wide-hip and gate mod, the ZL1 is a caricature of the now devastatingly ordinary SS. Its front fenders are 0.6 inch wider on each side than the SS's, partially to cover huge rubber and partially to allow more cooling air to the array of heat exchangers housed in the ZL1's NOS. And that hood? It's a functional two-piece aluminum and carbon thing that extracts air from the engine compartment. Wind tunnel time largely determined the shape of the ZL1's NOS, which divides its work between managing lift and drag and cooling the powertrain and brakes. Despite its Sofia Vergara-esque bulges, this ZL1 presents about 2% less frontal area than the previous model, which, coupled with an additional 70 horsepower, should yield immeasurably improved top speed. GM isn't releasing that number yet. But the fifth generation CL1 managed 184 miles per hour flat out. We expect this ZL1 to just miss the 200 mile per hour club. Forged 10 inch wide front and 11 inch wide rear wheels were 285 slash 30 R20 and 305 slash 30 R20 rubber, respectively. Good year, once again, is the ZL1's tire supplier and it worked with engineers through many variants of its Eagle F1 supercar tire before arriving at the final compound and construction, which is called G-3. Carbon ceramic brake rotors, like those offered on the 2015 Z-28, aren't available. This is both a cost control measure and a practical one, as the iron brakes meet GM's performance targets. The ZL1's two-piece 15.4-inch iron front rotors are clamped by fixed, six-piston Brembo calipers. Even with hefty brakes, the Alpha platform nets the ZL1 a 220-pound weight savings over the last model, at about 3,950 pounds when equipped with the 10-speed automatic, though, it's certainly no featherweight. Still, it's quicker. Chevy says 10-speed equipped coupes should hit 60 in 3.5 seconds and hammer through the quarter mile in 11.4 seconds at 127 miles per hour. Customizable launch control that allows adjustable engine speed and wheel slip between 5 and 15% is standard and can be had with either transmission. 
and, keeping pace with Ford, the ZL1 now offers Line Lock, a feature that clamps the front brakes but leaves the rear free for epic burnouts. It's so buried in the instrument cluster menus that even Captain Liability himself couldn't accidentally activate it. Chevy is prepared to sell you a ZL1 coupe for $62,135 when it goes on sale this month. The convertible will follow in the spring for seven grand more. Both will be subject to gas guzzler taxes, and their gratuitously burned hydrocarbons will be worth every extra penny. It shouldn't surprise us that this car can at once be so unapologetically raw and yet so seemingly controllable. So loud and yet so articulate. Finding those traits melded in a single piece of hardware like the ZL1 is one of the great joys of being a car enthusiast today. And it's quite likely that the ZL1 is the most rewarding means ever created to move leaves off a racetrack. That the ZL1 packages 11 heat exchangers into its powertrain shouldn't surprise you. 650, after all, are a lot of ponies to chill. Of the 11, 7 are air to liquid coolers and 4 are liquid to liquid. There's an air conditioning condenser packed in there as well because drivers need cooling, too. Chevy engineers came up with a novel solution for keeping the ZL1's active differential from cooking its lube. Cooled transmission oil is routed to a heat exchanger inside the differential housing where it extracts heat from the differential oil. An auxiliary transmission cooler is packaged horizontally and sits under a wind tunnel designed cover that protects it from road debris and increases flow through its core. Cool. Cool.